In this lecture, we're going to be introducing the concept of neuroplasticity. Imagine being able to rewire your entire mental existence. When we talk about neuroplasticity, we're talking about the concept of a plastic, flexible brain, which in short, means that you can actually change your mind, physically and chemically. Now, there is a phenomena where your brain's neural synapses and pathways are altered as an effect of environmental behavior or neural changes. And we're going to talk way more about this later on. But I want to assure you that this concept of neuroplasticity that you heard about is actually true. Researchers look at this concept in different ways. Some of them look at it as the ability of the brain to change its actual structure and function in response to a certain experience. Um, <clears throat> other researchers look at it as the capacity of the nervous system for adaptation and regeneration after trauma, which is directly linked to Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. And, of course, some researchers look at it as the ability of our central nervous system to undergo this entire structural and functional change in response to a new experience, which is kind of the combination of both ideas that we said before. Now, I personally read several books related to neuroplasticity. When I first discovered this concept a couple years back, I was absolutely fascinated. It is one of the most phenomenal human experiences that I've ever seen or read about before. And throughout the course, you will discover that this misconception that the brain only changes at a young age is absolutely wrong. Even when you're an adult, even elderly people can alter their brain and work on their brain's plasticity. So now, generally speaking, we are going to define the concept of neuroplasticity. So what is neuroplasticity? Neuroplasticity, also known as brain plasticity, is a concept that is strictly connected to the brain's ability to change, adapt, and adjust both physically, functionally, and chemically by stimulation from your environment behavior, thinking, emotions, habits, and other physical elements. And I believe that this definition is pretty straightforward. In a nutshell, what this definition is saying is that your brain has the ability to change, not just change, but adapt, which is a Darwinian concept. It comes from the concept of evolution how our brain and our entire body would adapt to different environments. It has been known for a long time that through evolution, we can change our physical structure. And Charles Darwin, when he went to the Galapagos Islands, he discovered something amazing. There's a certain species of finches, um, a kind of bird that varied from one island to another. Different species had different beaks. There was the large ground finch, medium ground finch, small tree finch, and green warbler finch. Each and every one of these birds, even though they are the same bird, but the different species through natural selection had different beaks to be able to adapt to a different diet that was existing on a specific island. And what Charles Darwin concluded is that the regulation of the BMP protein is the principal way in which break variation occurs in these finches. And the differences were acted upon by natural selection and resulted from the evolution of these species towards their specific environment. And researchers discovered after a while that the entire brain's structure, function, and chemical structure cannot just change, but also adapt to environments and situations and adjust itself. And moreover, they discovered that this 
does not just happen by the influence of the surrounding environment, but also behavior traits, the way of thinking, emotions, habits, and other physical elements can play detrimental roles when it comes to the brain's plasticity. And as science advanced, researchers discovered that neural chains, networks and connections are not fixed at all, which was of course uh, against the conception back then, but in fact, they are occurring and disappearing continuously throughout our lives. And be really careful when we say throughout our life. We didn't say throughout our childhood, nor throughout our adulthood. We're talking about your entire life, depending on different factors that we mentioned before, such as environment all the way down to physical elements and experiences. Now, of course, we're going to go more over how uh, neuroplasticity works on the brain and how it can affect the neurons and the entire neural system in our brain. But at first, for those of you who don't know what a neuron is or what its function is, a neuron is basically a specialized cell inside the human brain that transmits information to other nerve cells, uh, also to muscles and gland cells that would uh, release hormones in the body. Now, we just want to focus on the basic understanding of neurons, because if we really want to expand into the entire science, there is an entire science behind neurology is an actual branch of medicine that deals with these uh, disorders of the nervous system. But what's essential to know is that a neuron can have different shapes, different sizes, and different types. However, a typical neuron would have four major regions itself. There is the actual cell body, and then there are the dendrites, there's the axon, and there are the synaptic terminals. Now, the cell body usually contains the DNA and other structures to build protein and make energy. Now, the axon is a cable-like projection along the length of the cell that is usually covered with a thin layer of myelin sheath, which makes it approximately like an insulated electrical wire. And lastly, we have the dendrites that are all small branch-like projections of the cell that ensure connection to other cells, allowing the electrical signals to go through from one cell to the other. Now, I'm not going to go in depth about how neurons work. I'm going to add an article about it. For those of you who are curious to know more about it, you can always go and check out the article. But... Neuroplasticity is a concept that you can learn without knowing how the neuron works. So I don't want to waste any time talking about some information that might not be very useful for you. And I'm going to focus on the core information here. But as I said, if you want to learn more about it, there's going to be an article uh, in the course that talks about how neurons work and how the neural system can work, how information is transmitted and how it's transmitted from the brain and the nervous system all the way to your muscles and your glands. But in short, what you need to know is that science showed that these neural systems and these neurons themselves that form a structure altogether can actually change this structure based on environment, behavior, thinking, emotions, habits, and other physical elements and experiences. Now, for the first side of the story, when we were talking about the concept of neuroplasticity, what researchers found is that while we practice one activity on a consistent basis, Neuronal circuits are being formed, leading to better ability to perform the practice task with less waste of energy. So when you have a certain behavior that you do on a consistent basis for it to eventually become an automatic behavior, turning into a habit through repetition to eventually become a lifestyle, it would become hardwired in your brain. Your brain's structure 
will change and the neural networks will change in a way that would ensure the longevity of this habit while reducing the amount of energy directed towards it. And what most people didn't know is that neuroplasticity is a dynamic process, which means it happens on a consistent basis with each and every decision that you make on a daily basis. Huge structures of behaviors and personality traits can be traced down to neuroplasticity. Every single experience, thought, behavior, uh, memory, social experience that you had ever since you were a kid was contributing towards uh, this structure that you have in your brain, this neural structure that you have. And through the concept of neuroplasticity, all of this change and adaptation happened. So every time you give in to a temptation and you eat what you're not supposed to eat, you are teaching yourself that it's okay to break uh, rules that you put for yourself. In the contrary, every time you push yourself hard in the gym, you're developing stronger willpower and tolerance for this, these feelings of discomfort at one point. And um, Simland.com also mentions that every time you focus your entire attention on one single activity at a time, you will be increasing your overall concentration and focus. And now, of course, we're going to be talking about each and every one of these concepts later. But the main idea is to understand that when we practice an activity on a consistent basis, the neural circuits are being formed. This uh, neural structure and network in your brain is changing, is being formed or is adapting to a certain pattern. And the latter can actually turn into a lifestyle. And that explains countless of random habits that you do on a daily basis. But it doesn't stop there. Once we stop practicing a certain activity, the brain will redirect these neuronal circuits by a much known use it or lose it principle. In a nutshell, you have the ability to rewire your brain and we aren't just talking about thoughts. We are talking about changing the actual chemistry and physical state of your brain, not just through adaptation, but through cancellation. So the concept of neuroplasticity works both ways. It creates and it can destroy as well. During uh, these changes, the brain would engage in synaptic pruning, deleting the neural connections that are no longer necessary or useful or that we're not using that often, and it will strengthen the necessary ones that we are using on a consistent basis. So when you have a certain thing that you do and you're so natural at it and you do it without even thinking, but then you stop doing it for a year or two and then you get back to it, you're going to feel like you're not as good as before. And people just say, yeah, you probably forgot about these things. But in fact, what is happening is that the neural network that was responsible for this certain habit started to weaken up. Now, of course, uh, when we talk about neuroplasticity, we're not talking about a short process. We're talking about a process that needs and takes a lot of time. But in short, what the concept of use it or lose it principle means is that when you use a certain neural structure or network, it will become stronger. And when you don't use it, it will become weaker and you will lose it. And this is just the beginning. First off, in this course, we're going to be talking about what is neuroplasticity and how it works in more depth than what we talked about before. We're going to see that there are different types of neuroplasticity. We're going to talk about neurosuicide, actions, experiences, behaviors, things that we do on a daily basis or that we do often that would work in a way as a reverse neuroplasticity, it would actually damage your brain rather than help it. Then we're going to look at some fundamentals and basics that can help you understand the system of neuroplasticity really well. The first step into acquiring this ability to rewire your brain is to understand the fundamentals and basics uh, upon which 
neuroplasticity concept is based. Moreover, you're going to learn how to rewire your brain, increase your brain plasticity and neuron networks. Then we're going to move on to other concepts that are still directly related to neuroplasticity. We are going to explore the concepts of focus, concentration, and attention. And in fact, you're going to discover that focus, concentration, and attention are three different aspects. And when most people say you need to focus more, what they usually mean is that you need to concentrate more. And this misconception creates a huge gap in the understanding of the human brain's focused concentration and attention's concepts. We are going to talk about the superhuman productivity, some techniques, some concepts, some rules and principles that can make you super productive. You are also going to learn how to manage your time properly and how to manage your mind properly. And of course, we're going to be talking about these concepts because as we said, they are all detrimental factors when it comes to neuroplasticity. The more concentration you put on a task, the more brain toll and brain energy is consumed, the better it is when it comes to rewiring your brain and changing the neural uh, structure. Then using your attention to your advantage. So instead of checking your phone every single time it, it blinks or it rings, and that's of course caused by our somehow disrupted attention. And then we want to use the concepts of superhuman productivity, the concepts of time management and mind management, turn them into an actual habit that is rewired inside your brain. And finally, we're going to talk about habits and how to change them. We're going to talk about the concept of procrastination and how to beat it. We're going to talk about emotional intelligence, learning strategies, memory boosting and enhancing. Habits are of course one of the most essential principles when it comes to neuroplasticity. Habits equals repetition and consistency and repetition and consistency ensures proper brain plasticity and flexibility. And then we're going to talk about procrastination which is one of the biggest enemies when it comes to brain plasticity. What procrastination does is that every single time you're trying to do something and when you're trying to do something your brain is trying to wire this thing into your neural system and structure what procrastination does is that it just cuts this chain every time you procrastinate you avoid proper consistency and you fall back into weakening the neural structure and system when you're working on your brain's plasticity on the other hand we're going to also talk about emotional intelligence because you're going to see throughout the course that moments that are filled with a lot of emotions, um, peak emotional states would actually trigger way more neural structures than experiences that are not that charged with emotions. And that's exactly why first time experiences can always create shocking moments for people and can create mental health issues especially when they are charged with a lot of emotions so when you're a baby and it's the first time you see a dog and you see this dog biting somebody or attacking somebody your mind is gonna be wired into an idea that puts dogs and danger as equivalents we are also going to talk about learning strategies because when you learn new things, you are creating new neural structures in your brain. And this is one of the most essential goals that we have. Lastly, we want to talk about your memory, boosting your memory, enhancing your memory, and also controlling your memory because there are a lot of old memories that have huge impact on our lives. And this memory might be 20 years old, but it's still impacting your life on a daily basis. And this is what we need to look into. And of course, boosting your memory to ensure that your brain will remember a certain pattern or behavior so you can repeat it consistently afterwards.